On today's show, RIMAC unveils the C2 electric hypercar in Geneva, Porsche unveils the Mission E Cross Turismo, and a pair of Tesla semis make their first road trip from Tesla's Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada to Fremont, California. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and I sift through the week's news in clean energy and transportation so you don't have to. As always, thanks for joining me. As it was the Geneva Motor Show this week, I'm starting today's show with a Geneva Roundup, and what a better place to start than Croatian firm Rimac. Already well known for its fantastic Rimac 1 supercar, Rimac unveiled the C2, a pure GT hypercar that can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 1.85 seconds, produces a crazy 1.4 megawatts of power at the wheels, and has a top speed of 258 miles per hour, or 412 kph if you prefer. Aside from being truly beautiful, its carbon fiber monocoque construction is lightweight and high tech. Its 120 kilowatt hour battery pack is made from 6,960 21700 cells, and they feed a quartet of powerful electric motors. Apparently, it manages an NEDC range of 650 kilometers, 400 miles per charge. I don't have time to go into the specs here, but I promise there's a deep dive on this new Rimac Thoroughbred coming very soon. The Rimac C2 might sound like tire shredding fun, but over at the Goodyear booth in Geneva, the tire company was showcasing a new type of tire designed to deal with all the instant torque that electric vehicles develop. Called the Efficient Grip Performance Electric Drive, the prototype tyre has been engineered to minimise tyre wear even on the most powerful electric drivetrains, while simultaneously coping with the added weight that comes from adding an EV battery pack. It does this by tweaking the tyre tread to have thinner channels than a conventional tyre, allowing more rubber contact with the road and thus small grip. At the same time, though, the tyre's compound has been tweaked to ensure low rolling resistance when in motion, improving range per charge. It is only a prototype, but if this ever hits production, I'll let you know. Like all of its fellow European rivals, BMW was busy at the Geneva Motor Show, and it used the event to celebrate the fact that it's reduced CO2 emissions from its new European car fleet by 42% in the last 23 years. It also reiterated its goal of offering 25 fully electric or partially electric models by 2025, including a production version of the iVision Dynamic. Slated to wear the BMW i4 name tag, the all-electric sedan will slot nicely in between the i3 city car and i8 range extended sports car. Due to be built in Munich, there's very little details on what we can expect of the i4 in terms of range and features, but it is a vehicle BMW is intending to launch around 2025. And as such, I'm going to suspect that it will have some of the autonomous vehicle capabilities of the concept car on which it's based, just with a more practical interior, I'd guess. Just as BMW has its iBrand of plug-in vehicles, so too does Mercedes-Benz have its recently launched EQ brand. And while the first brand new vehicle to wear the EQ badge has yet to enter production, Mercedes-Benz announced in Geneva that its electric variants of the Smart for Two and Smart for Four city cars would be getting the EQ badge moving forwards, presumably replacing the ED badge that's long caused customers in certain markets to be overcome with a fit of giggles. In markets where the gasoline smart car variants are still sold, the EQ badge will help differentiate the electric variants from the rest of the smart lineup. In the US, however, it means that all new smart cars will be branded smart EQs. So expect some new marketing slogans talking about a fresh new sound. EQ? Get it? Never mind. In the lead up to the Geneva Motor Show, many in the industry had expected Audi to showcase the production version of its upcoming e-tron electric SUV. Instead, however, Audi played a sneaky card, sending a fleet of camouflaged e-tron SUVs around Geneva with the task of driving around the city. The result? Lots of footage of Audi's first long-range EV driving on public highways, but not a lot of closure in terms of specification, price, or production plans. For that, I guess we're going to have to wait just a little longer. Inside the Geneva Motor Show, meanwhile, Audi's Volkswagen brand sibling Porsche unveiled a brand new concept car in the form of the Porsche Mission E Cross Turismo. 
essentially an all-road or CUV variant of the Mission E with flared wheel arches, better ground clearance and a wagon-style hatch, the Mission E Cross Turismo seems to be an indication that Porsche is as interested in chasing after the Tesla Model X with the Mission E Cross Turismo as it is chasing after the Model S with the Mission E sedan. While it's a concept car, Porsche has suggested that the Mission E Cross Turismo could enter production around 2022, a few years after the Mission E enters production. And with the same technology underneath, it's going to be a very competitive car if Porsche can bring it to market at a decent price. As you might expect, Porsche's parent company, Volkswagen, was also in Geneva and also unveiled a new concept electric car in the form of the ID Vision, an all-electric autonomous sedan that previews a vehicle Volkswagen wishes to bring to production at some point in the future. I say at some point, though, because at the same time as extolling the virtues of electric drivetrains, Volkswagen CEO Matthias Muller was telling reporters that he believed diesel engines would have a renaissance when customers realised how clean and green they were. At the same time, Volkswagen bosses confirmed in Geneva that the previous plans they had of electrifying the Volkswagen Beetle were indeed no more. Less than three years after Dieselgate, it seems Volkswagen still hasn't got the memo that diesel days are numbered. Dear, oh dear. And while I haven't covered every vehicle that was unveiled in Geneva, there were plenty of others. That's where I'm going to leave the Geneva coverage, because meanwhile in the US this week, a pair of prototype Tesla semis were performing the first real-world cargo test haul. Announced on Wednesday morning, the two Tesla semis, towing trailers full of Tesla battery packs destined for Fremont, California, left the Reno Gigafactory and were later spotted charging up at a Tesla supercharger station in Sacramento, about halfway through their maiden voyage. At the moment, the Tesla semis are having to use Tesla's supercharger network to refuel, but ultimately Tesla plans to build special mega charger stations specifically for the trucks. I'm sure this won't be the last successful run, so I'll be sure to let you know of any other sightings. And given a prototype Tesla Model 3 showed up in New Zealand last winter, you never know. You may see one on a Kiwi road near you very soon. Over the past few months, eight different energy networks across New Zealand have dropped their transmission prices, and that means lower prices for 60% of Ecotricity customers, thanks to their transparent energy pricing structure. So if you're not an Ecotricity customer yet, it's time to switch. It doesn't matter if you're a residential or a business customer, you could save big on New Zealand's cleanest electricity. So make sure you click on the link below to make the move today. Alongside everything else going on in Geneva this week, Mercedes-Benz quietly unveiled a new plug-in vehicle. Rather than a car, however, it was a bus in the form of the Citaro All-Electric, a city bus with an expected range of around 150 kilometers fully laden per charge of its 243 kilowatt hours of battery packs. That might not seem like much, but in busy cities where buses are often the most polluting as they're not running at efficient engine speeds, that kind of range isn't a problem. Moreover, Mercedes-Benz says it's looking to offer pantograph charging for its Citaro buses in the future, a feature we've already seen demonstrated on electric buses made by both Volvo and Proterra. Not so long ago, Carl Thomas Newman, CAO of the Opel brand while it was still owned by General Motors, tried very hard to convince GM to turn the entire Opel brand electric. But as I'm sure you'll know, Opel was recently sold to French automaker PSA and as of now, hasn't really embraced electric vehicles all that much. Newman is no longer Opel CEO, having left the company after his attempts to electrify the brand failed. But as the folks at Electrek reported this week, he's now the proud owner of both a BMW i3 and Tesla Model S, showing that once you've got the electric car bug, no matter who you are, it's hard to keep supporting internal combustion engine vehicles. And finally, over the past few years, as Tesla has improved its autopilot software on hardware-equipped Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X cars, we've seen many examples of drivers who've ignored Tesla's advice and local traffic laws in many cases, letting autopilot take over all of the driving duties rather than act as a driving aid. Well, one such example was record producer DJ Calypso, who was pulled over on the 101 freeway in LA last year for driving his Model S on autopilot with his feet out the window. He was ticketed for driving at an unsafe slow speed and for using his cell phone, but this week the DJ successfully had his ticket torn up by the courts after he proved that autopilot was doing all of the driving. It's something of a milestone in one way, but honestly, please just don't try this at home. Just 
don't, okay? And on that note, it's time to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.